Welcome, everybody, to the Indiana Basketball Weekly Show on the Grueling True Sports Network. I'm your co-host for the Indiana Basketball Weekly Show, Mike Goodpaster. And right now, I would like to welcome in my other co-host. First up, he won a national championship in 1981 with the Indiana Hoosiers and is now a member, after campaigning for years and taking a lot of money out of his own pocket, in the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Help me welcome to the show, Steve Risley. So elections are won, Mike. They're learn that. <laughs> Okay. Um, And and of course, we have the man with probably half the ego of Risley, but twice the looks, Colin Hartman. How you doing, Colin? I'm doing all right. How you guys doing? All right. And that's really (laughs) not a compliment because Steve has half the looks of the ass of a horse. But go ahead. (laughs) Mike, before we, we, how long before we go on, you started announcing Colin before me? Um, I say next show. Probably. Go ahead and just mean, do it and get it over Actually, with. to tell you the truth, it's just usually because you talk so much, you're the first person on my mind when I introduce my co-host. <laughs> All right, well, at least I'm trying. That, when I interview or introduce Colin, if I've already inter- introduced you, then I'll have to worry about you interrupting him. Um, tonight, the Indiana Hoosiers <laughs> ran the record to 5-1 and one with a win over the UC Davis Aggies, 76-62. to 62. The Hoosiers were led with, by Juwan Morgan, who scored 31 points. I think we had four guys in double digits. I don't think this is what we were hoping for tonight, Colin. What was your take on the game? Yeah, obviously it's not a not a way you want to win. But um, I guess it's quick turnaround. Um, still got guys out. Um, a positive that we can – Look at this, and obviously you said it, Jawan kind of is the game that we're, we expect him to have every once in a while. Um, and then, and then uh, I don't know. I, I feel like everything, I was looking at the stat line, everything kind of is in a line. Everybody's at the same spot um, except for um, the turnovers. They had six more turnovers, but they also had 23 more, or they had 23 fouls and only had nine. Um, I think that our size came into play in our athleticism to where they just couldn't keep up um, physically, which got them into foul trouble. And we didn't shoot great from the free throw line. Um, there's a lot of things that aren't pretty <laughs> in this game, obviously. But, I mean, it, especially – at this level, you'll take a win every night if you can get one, no matter how it comes. All right. Um, when I look at this, Steve, the thing that stands out to me on the stat line is UC Davis shot 48% for the field, 50% from three-point line. Um, the defense concerns me, and total rebounds were 26 to 26. Um, both of those stats worry me big time. I agree. Um, yeah, I, I... Yeah, I I think that we're just starting to play like a team of good athletes and not a, 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 a good team. Um, our perimeter defense, for some reason, is just falling off the face of the earth. Um, we're not getting after people like we were in the first couple, three games of the season. You know, Colin, let me ask you a question to kind of deflect it back to you. Before I say what is, I want to say, is there is there a problem with this team? I'm not sure there's a problem. <laughs> So the question back to you, Tom, is it, not what, what is the problem? Is, is there even a problem with this basketball team? Or are they just still tired and beat up? You there, Colin? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, I don't think it's necessarily really a problem yet. Um, because I, like you said, it is like we are, kind of, we are beat up. We are tired. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's early. Um, but I think that if there were, was a problem, if I were to choose, you know, if I, if, it was, <laughs> if I was forced to choose what the problem is, I think that it's kind of our demeanor, the nonchalantness, um, yeah. if that's even the word, um, and just, you know, not taking teams seriously sometimes. Um, but like I said, I don't think that's a problem yet. I think it's more so guys are tired getting adjusted to, to the speed of the game and, and the, the demand of the schedule. Um, but I, I really hope that it's it's not something that's culminating and, and actually becoming a thing. Um, 
because that can that can bury a team and it's going to take getting smacked in the mouth by a team like UC Davis of that that caliber at home to kind of wake you up um, or get embarrassed on a national stage like we have the opportunity yeah, it, um, it, to win. Just want to tell everybody if, if if you you didn't because you didn't get Big Ten Plus you didn't see the game. So there's probably a lot of people who are going to listen to this tonight that maybe didn't see the game. Um, this the score was not indicative of the game. I mean, basically, we didn't get the lead till what seven eight minutes to go in the second half, where we got tied, yeah. I think, and then maybe with five minutes ago we got the lead. We were down by as many as fourteen points in yeah. the second half. Um, so, you know, it, I, I think what this team is missing. Again, is is a fiery on court leader, and I know Juwan is breaking out. He had thirty one points tonight, ten rebounds. But Juwan's not a fiery on court leader. I'm going to tell you, if we were doing this when Isaiah was playing with us, there'd have been night. He would have night would have called a timeout, and Isaiah, Isaiah would have never let us get to the bench. We just stood on the free throw line and hashed it out amongst ourselves, and we'd all gotten a butt chewing from Isaiah. Well, my, know, my and, and concern this is, is when he this. left as a sophomore. And this is for anybody who wants to answer it. Um, I'll give you the one game the other night. UC Davis is even worse than that team. This is a 1-16. and They came in here and had a 14-point mm-hmm. lead early in the game. They played Indiana dead up for all but the last five or six minutes of the game. Indiana has Juwan Morgan. They have Romeo Langford. I don't care who they're missing. There's not players like that on UC Davis. And the part yeah. where I am concerned is this. Indiana last year, a lot of these guys were on the team when they got smacked in the mouth by a Fort Wayne or an Indiana yep. State. Um, I don't understand why this team is lackadaisical. I don't understand the lack of emotion from the team. Um, if you have this much uh, much talent, you should be steamrolling these teams. I don't care if you play a game each of the – I don't care if you played four games yesterday – you should come out today, and you should smack UC Davis because we can talk all the injuries we want. And I think Devonte Green is the leader this team needs, but they don't have him yet. But at some point, somebody's got to step up and you know grab us by the neck and say we got to get our asses in gear. And Juwan Morgan does that quietly. He does it by example. But outside right. of him, somebody's got to step up and be the fiery, emotional leader on this team. I don't know if we have that, if I'm being completely candid. I don't know if we have the extremely vocal, um, grab you by your shirt collar, bring you in, um, get in your face a little bit kind of guy. I mean, we have a bunch of guys that are kind of quiet and lead by example, but if you have a bunch of dudes leading by example and nobody's vocal, it's not going to work. All right, the one thing I do know, though, is this. Uh, I've coached for a long time, and usually at some point, as the coach, you got to make these guys miserable until – they just want to win the game. And I know, Steve, you played for Coach Knight, and the thing is this. I think that you need a head coach that can impose their will on the players to get the will imposed by the team. But that was my next question. I was going to ask it to Colin. Colin, I mean, for somebody who's allegedly a defensive genius from Dayton, are you seeing a lot of improvement in defense right now? I'm, 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 before I even comment, go ahead. Are you seeing a lot of improvement in defense? Uh, on the court, no. Um, no, exactly. Uh, and I think, I think, because we touched on it last time, it's coming down to it's not going to work on it for hours and hours a day. Cause we do. I know we do. We always have. Uh, we did last year. Uh, so I know they're doing it. I know it's a priority on every schedule, practice schedule. But I think it all goes back to communication. Um, and I think the lack thereof with this team. Well, what I know well, is this. Well, that's the lack of the fiery I, on-court leadership. I may just be a stupid football coach when it comes to this, but football-wise, I want a defense that imposes their will. You need communication, yeah, but what you need is you need five guys that will go out there that aren't afraid to get right in somebody's grill and make their life a living hell for 40 minutes, and this team does not have that right now. And, I mean, to me, you can communicate all you want. <laughs> But you give me five crazy guys that'll go out and just man up their guy and play defense, you'll be fine. What I don't see here is any sense of urgency at any time with this team. Now, I also believe this. I watched Archie Miller coach at Dayton. It's not that far from my house. 
I believe he will get this straightened out. I'm not somebody here it's all yes. gloom and doom. But this has to be figured out really quick. And not the Duke game. They're not going to beat Duke. All right, Duke has more talent than they do. And right now, Indiana is not playing as a cohesive unit, which Gonzaga showed you can go out and beat a more talented Duke team. So I'm not even right. worried about that. What I want to see is when they go to Cameron Indoor Stadium, I want to see the team that goes out there and competes. And the thing that's even more important than that is this. I want to see the next game them come out and compete the same way again. Because last year, you guys competed that way against Duke. And then you'd come out the next game against whoever it was, and that intensity wouldn't be there. And the thing that worries me is, outside of those first two games of the season, and mainly the Marquette game, I haven't seen a team that played two halves of basketball yet. And if you don't play two halves of basketball on the grind at a Big Ten, this is not going to end up the way we want it to. All right. I agree. So, Risley, you need to get this yeah. fixed. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think there's a problem that it's not very fixable, and I'm, that's why I have one to ask Colin. Not what is the problem, even if there is a problem. I don't really think there is a problem. I just think they're they're immature. They're young. They seem to enjoy playing offense a lot more than defense. I think you have to find a balance there and enjoy playing both ends. Like you said, Mike, that you just want to go out and, and defense is the opportunity to hit people and to stick it to people and, and to. Um, be as aggressive as you want to be. Offense is when you use your finesse and, and your, your athleticism and your skills. Um, and I'm just seeing this team kind of want to play more offense and defense right now. And really my disappointment, if I had one, would be more that, that, again, I go back to just I'm not seeing the progress anywhere from the beginning of the first game this year um, to now on, on defensive improvement. We're not getting, Mike, to where you say we should be, which I agree with you entirely. We're not getting to be somebody who's like, I don't want to have to play offense against Indiana. You know, when when I was playing, people didn't want to play offense against us because um, they knew they were going to get beat up, they were going to get banged, they were going to get taken out of their game, and they were going to get rattled. Yeah, and, and if you got scored was, on, you were offended and you took that personal. Well, maybe not yeah, you. Yeah, you paid it back. You got scored on came a out lot. Of court, you you let them know you were offended. Yeah, you let them know you're offended. I mean, you, you know, if I got scored on, like I said, I played against Magic five times in my career, fouled out every game. I, he scored on me, sure. He's a much better player than I was, but every time he scored on me, I made him pay the price for it the next time he came down the court. Um, so I, I don't see that in this team, I think, to, to get to the next level. But, I mean, there's, we, a win is a win. And I think this is one of those coaching opportunities, unlike what we were talking about last time, where you can learn from losing. I hope that Indiana can take this game and Miller can impart a lot of learning on this team. They won the game. And a win is a win, like Colin said. A win is a win right now, and that's a good thing. So you want to win every game you can because it matters for tournament selection time, no matter who you're playing. But I think that this is a great coaching and learning opportunity for this game. You know, this is a team we're supposed to beat like 22 to 30 points. Um, we knew we came off a tired game. We hope they'd have gotten some rest. Um, I expected them to come out a little bit more prideful than they did. And, you know, first first 25 minutes of the game, we were dominated for the most part. And, and then, But then we, we woke up. So what I like about this team, what I love in the end, last thing I'm going to say about it is this team, unlike other teams that we've had in the past, is finding ways to win these games and not finding ways to lose these games. So we won the game. Yeah. And we I take that away that. and – we move on to Duke, and, Duke. you know, don't feel right. real confident about that game. But you never know. You never know. You never know. You never do. I mean, if you did. Right. But my big problem with this is this, the no television for the UC Davis at Indiana, because I'm pretty sure everybody that has Big Ten Network is paying for it on their cable bill anyways. I, I think it's pretty crappy of the Big Ten to pull this crap, and I think they do it like twice a year to every team at the start of the season to try to sucker their fans into paying for it. Yeah. Yeah. And all you needed for Indiana was a $9 one-time deal because we only played two Big Ten Plus games and both were in November. So I bought one month's worth for nine ninety five, and now I'm done with it. 
because they don't play on Big Ten Plus again this year. I, I can tell you what I did tonight is is what I used to do when I was a little kid. I listened to Don Fisher call the game on the radio. And That's probably you, the best way to listen to a game, yeah. Well, yeah. Actually, the best way to listen to the game is on the radio, Steve. Colin, do you agree with Steve with that brilliant assessment? Um, you know, I can probably count on one hand the amount of times that I've listened to <laughs> Okay, I'm on the radio. But when you listen to it, the best way to listen to it is on the radio or the internet, don't you think? Uh, it completely depends on the announcer. <laughs> Fish, I know Fish does a good job, so if I, I'm, I'm sure there was no, <laughs> no problems there. Yeah, Mike, I, it's Mike, what? It's, it's snowing in Washington. Oh, well, we're going to have to wrap the show up then because there's nothing I love more than a good <laughs> snow football game. It was okay, snowing earlier. We need to make a big mountain out of this game. I mean, we won the game. We beat the team. We ended up winning by, what, 14 or 15 or 16, somewhere in that? 14. Is there anything else, Colin? You know, I don't see a lot of real serious problems yet. I just see really what I see is lack of communication, as you said. I see a lack of leadership uh, on court, bulk of leadership on court. I love Juwan. He's stepping up big time. Took 18 shots tonight. We've got to have that every game for him. He does that. We score 31. We roll away. And he dominated the game today. He was the player of the game. Heads and shoulders above anybody even close. Is there anything else you're seeing, Colin? No, I just want, I just need the guys to get rested up. So, um, I yeah, think they, they have enough time here to – What's the prognosis of Devontae Green? Has anybody heard that? No. No, I have not heard. He's four games he's out now. That's a pretty long time. Yeah. Yeah. To be sitting out. Four games is uh, for what was it perceived to be, what, a hamstring? Four, was that something like that when we first heard about it? Am I missing the boat there? I don't remember. Am I thinking about the UCF quarterback? That was more than a <laughs> hamstring. That was really bad. <laughs> I think the hamstring was involved in that somewhere. Because I'm sitting there watching this, and he's holding his leg up in the air, and I'm thinking, isn't his leg supposed to go the complete opposite way of what it is? <laughs> and then they refused to show it again, and then I figured it out. Yeah, it was supposed to. If you haven't uh, seen a call, go to YouTube. <laughs> this video, yeah. just go look for the tip film on YouTube. It's, it's not, not good. Pretty. And it'll tell you why you should play basketball instead of football in the end. Football. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Do That's we want it. to do a do we want to do a Duke preview preview show Sunday night, guys? Uh, yeah. Game. All right, so we will be back Sunday night. Would you? What time you guys want to do it? Seven o'clock. Uh, that should um, work for me. Steve. Uh, you know, I'm three hours behind you guys, so whatever time you guys are want you to Are you asking it. your dog whether you can do the show or not, since the damn thing won't I'm show asking if they're going to have show. diarrhea still from the turkey they ate all yesterday. All right. Uh, all right, guys, so make sure you check us out Sunday night live on thegruelingtruth.net. Uh, remember, you can follow us at Survive in Advance. You can follow us at Grueling Truth. Actually, it's Survive the Magic on there. If you have any questions for the upcoming Indiana Duke game for Colin or Steve or myself, you can tweet them to us at Grilling Truth or send it to us on our Facebook page. Um, you can also also follow Steve Risley at S Risley thirty four and at Colin Hartman at Colin Hartman thirty. Correct, Colin? Yeah, there. All right, guys. Hey, Colin. Wait, wait, Colin. Yes. I've been listening to Christmas music since Halloween. Uh, that's all good. I mean, some people start yeah. early. Some people. Hey, that Lion King movie looks crazy, though. Oh, does that look? Uh, uh, that's I'm going to be unbelievably good. Is you got to see the for the new Lion King live action live action video or movie. Okay, guys. Uh, just hearing so... James Earl Jones' voice melts you right there. You're James Earl Jones. Really? It just melts you. Okay. It's great. All right. Yeah. Guys. All right. I'm going to get off here. You guys can keep talking about how James Earl Jones' voice turns Steve on if you want, but we're going to wrap the show up. Uh, you can hear all of our shows on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher. Wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find the grueling truth. So for Colin Hartman, Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to the grueling truth where the legends speak.